Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our website aws-dozo.com. Um, today we are going to talk about Amazon Recognition AI service, where we will try to create a custom model using custom labels. So you will bring your own images where you can go and define your custom models. And with those images, you will create a custom model, which you can use for your business specific uh, analysis of the images. And as you know, uh, Amazon Recognition provides you a way to uh, perform analysis of your images and the video. With custom labels, you can do your business specific analysis of the images. So let's get a bit introduction about uh, the service first. So as I mentioned, uh, Amazon Recognition is a service which can be used to analyze your uh, your videos and your pictures. And uh, it can analyze your pictures and videos in, in many ways. Uh, for instance, it can identify the labels on your picture. So it, uh, so it, it can analyze the picture. It can, it can identify there's a man, there's a bike, there's a, uh, like there's a, uh, hill and, and and crest uh, yeah it can really recognize the features of the in, in the in the in the picture it can also do content moderations uh, moderations it can it can tell you uh, is this uh, content uh, appropriate uh, for the adult or child or not the, that kind of moderation you can do uh, for your content and based on that actually you can make your image blur or non blur um, it can also do the text detection. So for instance, if like in this case, you can see uh, there's, a, there's a race going on if you, and, and there are numbers on the chest. And if you want to read those numbers uh, from the pictures, you can do text detection as well. Similarly, you can do text detection for uh, like cars, number plate and those kind of things. So Amazon recognition can also uh, read text in the picture and you can do text detection. It can do uh, um, your face analysis and, and, and search as well. So for instance, you can uh, do the analysis of the face. You can detect the face in the picture at first place. Uh, you can do various analysis in terms of this is the face of a male or female, eyes are open or closed, smiling, happy, not happy, those kind of things. Uh, and you can also do face, uh, when you identify the faces, you can give an ID to the face and that, that, that face you can search in the other pictures. So really, I mean, you can, you can identify a face as a searchable label and then that, that face can be then searched into other pictures if that face is in the other pictures or not. So you can do that kind of analysis as well. And then you can also do celebrity recognition. So yeah, I mean, if you uh, take a picture of a celebrity and you say, I want to identify the celebrity in the picture, um, and the Amazon recognition can do the celebrity identification as well. So it can really do analysis in various ways. Uh, and recently uh, it, it was announced that Amazon recognition also does uh, personal protection uh, equipment uh, detection. So that means if, if in the picture, if you see someone is using uh, you know, this uh, protective uh, equipment, it can detect those protective equipment as well. So um, these are the various, uh, the various analysis of the videos and audios Amazon recognition can do. And for doing this analysis, you don't need to be a data scientist. You can simply make API call, uh, pass your picture and say, I want to analyze uh, my picture in the following ways. And it can really uh, analyze the picture and give you back the result. You just need to know the development. Uh, you need to have a developer skill. You don't need to be a data scientist. Um, now, what Amazon recognition does that it also comes with custom labels. And uh, with custom labels, uh, so in, in when you go when when you use your Amazon recognition, you don't actually create any of your model. The models are created. Models are created and trained by Amazon. All you do is simply call those models and API and get your job done. Uh, but um, if you are working in a particular industry or if you want to do a particular type of analysis, then you might want to create your own custom model. Okay, and that you can do using Amazon recognition custom labels. So for instance, I'll give you examples. Uh, suppose you want, um, you are uh, for certain type of business, you want to 
identify uh, the name of the birds in the picture, name of the, for instance, in this case, name of the dog in the picture, dog, uh, uh, no, breed in the picture, whether it's uh, German Shepherd or it is Golden Retriever and those kind of things. Uh, you might want, you, you might want to have a, uh, you have a catalog of flowers and you want to identify the name of the uh, flower in the catalog. Okay. So you might have a requirement where you have your own custom pictures, your own business specific pictures, and you want to label those pictures in your business context. And in that case, if you want to build a model which can do such, uh, no, such uh, can build a model for such custom labels, then you use Amazon recognition custom label. As an example, for instance, is that suppose you are in manufacturing industry and based on the picture you want to identify that, oh, this is a spark plug, or this is an alternator, or this is a turbocharger. Uh, again, if you want to this kind of custom analysis, yes, you can you can do that using custom label. And, I, and we are going to do a very interesting exercise using custom labels in this, in this workshop. So bottom line is that you can bring your business specific pictures uh, which can have a business specific custom labels and you might want to create a model using those pictures, using those images, which you can use to detect the labels uh, in the picture specific to your business. If you have that kind of requirements, then you should be using Amazon recognition custom label. So let's see how Amazon recognition custom label works. It's a very simple service, guys. I mean, it's, it's very powerful, but and, and I'll show you an example in this workshop, uh, which, is, which is so interesting actually, and that will give you a lot of ideas how you can use this service for. Uh, but if you try to use this service, it's pretty simple and straightforward service. And it is a four-step service actually, four-step four step configuration. In the first step, you prepare your training data. So you have to bring in your data, you, uh, and when you're saying, when I'm saying training data, it's, it's your training images. So you bring in your data, in the, your, your business specific images, which you want to use as a training data to prepare your trained model. And then you label your training data. So of course, when you're bringing your customer specific business, a uh, customer, uh, so your, your business specific pictures, you want to identify your custom labels on top of that. Like for example, like I gave you like, suppose you have pictures of, uh, uh, different uh, flowers and you want to identify because suppose you have a flower shop and you want to identify the name of the flowers based on the picture. Uh, in that case, you can bring your own catalog of uh, pictures of the flowers and then you can label on your on your picture the name of the flowers depending on what the flower is in the picture. And then based on that, you can build a, build a custom model. So the second step is you label your training image data. And once you have done the leveling of training with data, the data is all, all set already for uh, modeling purpose. And then you simply train your model using training data. So it takes some time, but yeah, you train your model. And once model is ready, uh, you simply use the model. Uh, and when I say use the model, suppose the, uh, going back to example of these flowers, you can then with this model, you can send a picture to this model saying, hey, here's a picture, tell me which flower is this and model can tell you with certain confidence that I think this is yeah, rose or this is uh, some other flower. So uh, literally that kind of custom business specific image based model you can create in these four simple steps. So let's go through these steps one by one to understand a little more detail about, though they're very simple to use, but a little more context about them. So first, off, uh, first one is that when you're trying to prepare your training data, Actually, you're preparing your training data for uh, training the model. Uh, so more pictures you bring, more efficient your model is. Because more variety of pictures you give to the model, more, yeah, more, uh, more data elements go into the picture, um, more mature your model comes out. However, the requirement is that your pictures, there should be at least 10 pictures. So Amazon recognition says that, hey, if you have at least 10 pictures, you can build your model. But um, if you want your model to be very efficient, the performance to be very accurate, then it is always a good idea to bring as much, um, as, as many pictures as you can. And the picture has to be JPEG or uh, PNG uh, form, uh, PNG uh, image formats. 
Now you can bring your picture in many ways to, uh, I mean, like you can use uh, SageMaker Ground Truth, which is a way to label your, uh, your label your data, but I'm not going into that. But two main things you can do to bring your picture other than yeah, uh, Ground Truth is that you can import your images into an S3 bucket and say, hey, my data, my training data is in this S3 bucket. That's the one way you can work. And second is that you can uh, you can upload your images uh, from your computer. So in this case, simply say, hey, I'm going to upload my images all the way from my my computer. So you can you can do uh, that uh, as well. So you literally, uh, you can work in two ways. And of course, there's a choice. You can also use uh, you can use also use your um, um, SageMaker ground truth. Uh, or if you have already prepared some custom data set uh, earlier, you can reuse that as well. Okay, but again, that custom data set you would have prepared using one of the three methods over here. So there's primarily three methods. One is that you use a, a ground truth uh, a service from SageMaker, or uh, which again I'm trying to keep little out of the context, out of the discussion here, because then I don't want to go into that loop. Uh, and then the, yeah, the two primary methods are you upload to your S3 bucket or you keep uh, your simply upload, upload images from your computer. So this, this way you can bring your data in for the uh, modeling purpose. Then the next step is you label your data. So your, your images has been uploaded either through S3 or through from your computer. Now you want to, um, label the images and you can label images in, in many ways so you can one example here i'm giving you for instance these are three images which have been uploaded you select all three images and say hey this is a river okay so you create your set of custom labels you can say river plant um, hills mountain uh, lake uh, banks yeah that could be uh, your uh, your um, uh, your custom labels uh, and then simply you can select the image and say, hey, for instance, in this case saying, that, hey, these three images, it has river, okay? So river is a label you have identified on this picture. So you can do this way in, in, in the picture, the whole picture, you can say this is a river picture. Or you can also, if, if your picture has multiple objects, multiple labels, you can do boundary-based identification as well. So I, for instance, in this case, we are saying that the boundary, you can really draw a boundary on the picture. It, it's a very nice user interface provided by Amazon recognition custom labels. So you can really draw a boundary on the picture and say, hey, this is eco dot, or this one is eco, or this one is a telephone here. So if you have multiple objects on the picture, it's always a good idea that you define boundary across that object and say, hey, this is that particular label. So you can do boundary based labeling as well especially you use this method if you want to um, if you have multiple objects uh, on the on, on the picture you want to identify each of these objects as a different label custom label or if you have one prominent uh, object on the picture like here you can see the river then you can simply say oh, this picture is a picture of a river you can do that as well so the two methods of label but bottom line again is that you label your pictures yeah so these custom labels you create and you go picture by picture and you you identify this is a river this is a bank this is a mountain this is a hill things like that it is little a uh, troublesome job uh, to be honest guys uh, like troublesome is it's a lengthy job not a complex job it's a lengthy job so the more picture you have, each picture you have to go one by one and then identify it. Yes, I know. But hey, you need to do that because unless how would uh, Amazon recognize, uh, recognition will use your custom labels. So once you have labeled your training data, to be honest, you are all set. I mean, your, your whole hard work is done. Yeah, the hard work is actually the biggest hard work here is the leveling your images. And once that is done, you are... You, you you actually, yeah, nothing you have to do now. So what you do now, you simply go and train your model, okay? And when you train your model, you have to tell, okay, this is the data I want to use for uh, modeling purpose and, 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 and so on and so forth. Now, one of the decision you have to make here is that if you're training your model, of course, uh, your model has to be tested for the evaluation. So how, because, Amazon recognition wants to tell you back that how efficient your model is. Okay, so it wants to evaluate your model, test your model once it is created. So for that, it asks you to, to provide a test data. 
And here you have three choices. Either you can say, I want to choose one existing data set. So you can create a separate data set altogether that, hey, use this data set for modeling purpose, uh, for, the, for the testing purpose, for the evaluation purpose. And of course, you're training, uh, your, your data set which you're using for, um, uh, for testing uh, should be labeled as well. Uh, so that when uh, the model is created and model is testing against the label data, it will test it, it will predict what is there and it, it will verify whether the prediction was correct or not. Uh, correct or not. And based on that, it will project whether, uh, you know, it, how, how, efficient the, how efficient the model is. Uh, or you can create a new data set altogether, of course. Uh, uh, or the third one is you can split your training data set. And when you split your training data set, what happens is that it does a 20-80 split. So 20% of the data is reserved for the testing purpose and the training is done on the remaining 80%. So suppose you uploaded 100 pictures, like in this workshop, you will upload 100 pictures. Then it will simply train your model based on 80 pictures and 20 pictures it will keep out just for testing purpose. And those 20 pictures are also like label pictures, right? Because you have labeled all 100 pictures. And then uh, when the model is ready, it will simply go and test your model against those testing picture to see how efficient, how accurate your model is. So this is one decision you have to make. And then you simply train your data. And here you simply can run the training and train the model and then probably go for a coffee break or do go get something else done because depending on how many labels you have, how many images you're processing, this can take yeah, any time, an, an hour to a couple of hours. And once your model is ready, you can simply use it. So how do I use my model? So once my model is ready, the, my model is ready with, ready with certain version. And then in order to use the model, actually you first start the model. So you, your model is created, but it is not deployed. Okay, so when you say I want to start the model, then you say, hey, let's deploy this model. Okay, let's deploy the model so I can call my model as an API. So first you start the model, then you use the model. And when I say I'm using the model, actually you are, you are telling model that here is one picture. Tell me what, this, what label is on this picture and model will tell you back, this is the label on the picture. And finally, when you're done with that, you simply stop the model because when you keep the model running, actually you're paying for it actually, right? So you want to stop the model. So generally it's a three-step process. So, so you create the model and after that, whenever you want to use the model, you want to start the model, use the model, stop the model. Keep in mind, starting the model and stopping the model takes some time. Okay, so I suppose if you want to use the model then, and, and I'm like, if you want to keep your model like, 24 by seven, your requirements is like that. So you can start a model once and keep it like that. But suppose if you want to do this kind of recognition in batches, in that case, you can use the, use the method where you start the model, use the model and stop the model. Uh, and when you do that, actually, yeah, I mean, you don't pay for, yeah, because you don't want to keep your model running and not using it. But in that case, you're paying, <laughs> but you're not, uh, you're not using it. So uh, yeah, if, if your demand is such that uh, it is okay to run your model 24 by seven, it is so much in use. Uh, so you can keep always running the model, but uh, but if you see that now it, it has to be used sporadic in batches uh, yeah, at certain frequency, then you might want to start use and stop the model. And all these operations of start, use and stop the model can be done through APIs. So really you can automate it. So you can, you can create Lambda functions to start your model. Then you can create an API to simply use the model. And then you can uh, create another Lambda function to stop the model. So really you can automate this whole thing of uh, starting using and stopping the model. So this is how you use the model. So that was all about the custom labels. And let's see what we are going to build today in our workshop. So it's a very interesting workshop. I really enjoyed building it actually. What we are going to do is that we have 100 pictures of cats and dogs. And I'm going to use that as a training data. And I will use uh, Amazon recognition custom model to say, okay, I will upload this cats and dogs picture. I will label them as a cats and dogs. And then I will ask Amazon recognition custom labels to create a model based on that. 
And once that is done, I have now got some test data separately. Some five of the pictures uh, have of cats and dogs. So I'll use my Python programming to pass on this picture, pass on this picture uh, of cat and dog to the model and say, tell me, is, is this picture a cat or dog? And at least my model can tell me this picture is a picture of a cat or a picture of a god with certain confidence. So literally, I'm, I have prepared, in this workshop, you prepare a service which you can use to identify the picture of a cat or a dog based on this model. So in order to, so that's what we are going to build today. So in order to build this uh, workshop, we have created, um, yeah, uploaded a workshop to our website, aws-dozo.com. Uh, the link of this workshop has also been provided to description box uh, below. And this workshop provides step-by-step -step process to create the scenario we just talked about. So now I'm going to let, go, go, let you, you know, I, I'm going to walk you through the steps of this workshop and explain various things happening over there. Post that, you can use this link to run this workshop at your own pace, uh, in your own uh, time when you are free. And, and build this scenario and learn about how to use Amazon recognition custom labels. So let's jump onto the workshop. So this is the workshop uh, we talked about, and I, I think um, uh, this workshop, uh, this part we have already covered. So let's quickly start the workshop. So when I start the workshop, it shows you the steps you need to perform uh, to um, complete this uh, workshop. And the first step is prerequisite, which is which says that you need to have an AWS account. And if you don't have an AWS account, then you might want to use this link to create the AWS account. Now the next step is to prepare the data. So you need to prepare the training data, okay? As we uh, talked earlier as well. And I said that we have 100 pictures of cats and dogs as a training data, which you are going to train the data. And these pictures actually I have taken from Kaggle.com website. Actually, I, I searched for some pictures over there and I got cats and, dog, cats and dogs pictures. So let's let's go and use that too, yeah. Uh, Kaggle.com provided me this picture, okay? So this picture of the training data is provided in this link over, this GIF file over here, which you can download and it has got 100. So you might, yeah, you will download this GIF file into your local file, local uh, computer. And this has 100 pictures of cats and dogs. We also have got test uh, data. So once your model is created, I want you to programmatically test your data. And for that, we have provided some test data uh, as well which you can download from the other link here. But if you want to bring your own picture of cat or dog to test it, feel free to do so. Yeah? Uh, I will, in fact, I will encourage you to do that. So what we're doing here is that we go to AWS, uh, log into AWS console, go to island region. We create a bucket called Dojo test images. And uh, in that, uh, we simply upload this test data. So this test data we are uploading over there. And it has got uh, four pictures over here. Two pictures are the pictures of the cat and two pictures of the pictures of a dog, which will simply use it in our programming for testing purpose. As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to rely on this picture for testing purpose. If you want to bring your own picture of cat and dog, you can do that as well. But in this case, uh, when you do that, please upload that picture to the bucket over here so that we can use that in our programming. So you upload these pictures to the S3 bucket. After that, you go and prepare your training data. In order to prepare training data, you go to the Amazon Recognition Console and say, I want to use custom labels. And when you're using custom labels for the first time, actually it will ask uh, that I'm going to, uh, let uh, Amazon Recognition is going to create a custom label, a custom S3, uh, going to create a S3 bucket, okay? So it will first time, it will go and ask confirmation that it is going to create an S3 bucket. And this S3 bucket, it creates to manage your data sets and label information and model and those kind of things. So you have to confirm that, yeah, uh, Amazon recognition, you can create a, a, an S3 bucket. Okay, and it will happen only for the first time. Uh, once it is created, it simply reuses it across other projects. Then you create a new project. And in this case, we are saying it is a Dojo project. And then uh, uh, it's okay, uh, let's create a data set because remember the first step is to create the data. So we say, I want to create a data set and under the project. And then my um, my data set name is Dodo data set. And again, it asks four choices. And in this case, we are going to use upload from images from your computer because remember in the earlier steps, we gave you training data.gif file, which you uh, download, unzip on your local box. It has got 100 pictures of cats and dogs. 
So we want to upload those 100 pictures of cats and dogs from your computer over here. So you start adding the images and I think in one time you can add only 30 images. Uh, so you have to repeat this process four times and then you simply add your images into uh, your data sets. So you can see here, those are data sets, 100 images has been uh, uploaded. Okay, and these are the pictures which you have uploaded. And you can see that uh, out of 100 pictures, all 100 are unlabeled. That means you have uploaded your picture, but you have not yet provided your custom labels on the picture. Okay, so that job is still pending. Okay, so fair enough. After that, you say, okay, I want, I have bring my all 100 pictures in. Now I want to label my pictures. So you say, I want to, uh, first you have to create your labels. So say, I want to add labels. And in this case, my pictures are pictures of a cat and dog. So simply you add two labels, dog and cat. And of course, if you have more labels, you add more labels, less than you add less labels. But in this case, we had only cat and dog, so we added two labels. And then after that, once your labels are created, you have to assign the labels. So you can see here, uh, I'm, I'm giving, we'll giving an example that uh, we are selecting the six pictures over here. All six pictures have cats. Um, in this, uh, we have a picture of a girl as well, but fair enough, I don't want to recognize her. So simply say, okay, these are the six pictures of the cats. And you simply select that and they say, I want to assign label and you simply select uh, these are the pictures of the cat. So this is a case where I'm saying this picture has cat as an object. Uh, but if you want, if you have multiple objects, then you want to use the other method, drawing bounding box, no, sorry, draw bounding box, where you can open a picture and you can really draw a bounding box on your uh, images to uh, be able to identify more than one labels on your image. But in this case, we kept it simple for now that let's uh, give one label, whether it's a picture of a cat or a picture of a dog. So I gave you example, I selected these six pictures and I said, this is a picture of a cat. And you save it, okay? So you have to, I, I told you again, it's a little lengthy process because you have to do this for all 100 images. Yeah, so you can select more than one image at the same time. Of course, that makes your lot, job little, simpler, but you have to really label all of the pictures uh, accurately, whether it's picture of a dog or picture of a cat. And you can see that when I label six pictures, it shows me that out of 100 pictures, now six are labeled, 94 remain unlabeled, and those six labels are six cats, okay? Six cat pictures. So similarly, you finish labeling of other 94 pictures, and the end of day, it should look something like this, that okay, out of 100 images, all 100 are labeled, nothing is unlabeled, and out of those, 50 are dog, 50 are cat. And that's how my data was, but in some cases, you might have 40 cat, 50 cat, less dogs, but yeah, uh, you, uh, it, it will simply show you some stats saying that how your pictures have been labeled. Now, the hard part is over, that means I have uploaded my picture, I have labeled my picture, uh, and then it's time to go and train my model. So you move on to training your model, and in order to train your model, uh, is simply uh, yeah, close the data set and say, I want to train my model. Uh, it will ask you that, uh, okay, uh, this is the project, this is the data set you want to use, this is the same data set you created earlier and you labeled it, and says, okay, how do you want to create test set? Uh, how do you want to create the test data for the model evaluation, okay? And in this case, you say, uh, I selected the third option, split data set. So I'm saying, you know what? Just use 20% of my data set uh, for testing purpose, for evaluation purpose, and rest 80% for modeling, model training. I selected that option and clicked on the train button, train, uh, train, uh, yeah, button. And in this case, when I was building this workshop, actually, it took almost 60 minutes to finish the training of the model. Again, time to finish the model will depend on number of images, number of, uh, number of labels on the images. Uh, in this case, I had just one label per image, 100 images, and it was roughly 60 minutes it took to finish the whole labeling. And once the labeling is over, uh, once the training is over, it shows training complete. That means my, my model is now ready to run and being used.
If you open this model, actually you can also see uh, some information about um, uh, accuracy or performance of the model as well. So you can see here that uh, it shows that um, two labels of 80 images, uh, two labels of 80 images used for training data set, two labels of 20 images used for test data set, and this is the per label performance. So you can see here that, uh, yeah, um, precision is one one, so which is pretty high precision by the way. Okay, so looks like images are good quality and, and, and uh, yeah, model is quite mature. And at this point of time, you can make note of the, um, this uh, model ARN because this is what you need to use into your, um, into your, um, into your program, into your Python code to able to test any picture to identify if it is a picture of a cat or dog. So now it's time we can use this model in our program. But before that, we'll set up a development environment and we are setting up development environment in Cloud9. So we go to AWS Cloud9 and say, I want to set up a new um, environment. We call it Dozo environment. Uh, we selected a very small machine, T2 Micro, and then we said this is um, a Ubuntu machine and I want to simply create the environment. And once my environment is created, we need to uh, deploy uh, Python Boto 3 SDK over here because we want to do programming with um, uh, Amazon Recognition APIs, Amazon Recognition Custom Labels APIs, in fact. Uh, and if you want to talk to Amazon uh, AWS uh, API, you need to have um, Python Boto 3 SDK deployed for, um, for um, AWS. And for to do so, first we update the repository environment and repositories. Then we check the Python version, and after that we installed uh, Python Boto 3. And once Python Boto 3 was deployed, it is always a good idea to upgrade your Boto Core and Boto 3 because uh, that uh, gives you latest of the uh, access to the latest of the APIs or SDK. So that we do that. And once that is done, your environment is ready. Now you can make call to uh, AWS uh, recognition APIs. So let's create a client. So we create three clients, okay? Uh, and well, three clients, not really, yeah, three routines to be precise. So first routine we write is, uh, we call it start model.python. And this is a code which will simply start, start the model. So the code looks like following. So you say, I want to create a, a recognition client. And then you provide your model ARN. And remember the model ARN, when you created the model, you made note of the model ARN. You provide your model ARN over here. And you simply call this method called start the project version uh, with min minimum inference of one. So you're saying that, okay, with minimum inference of one, let's start this model. So you are starting the model. and when you so, do so, actually, it will it will start start the model, and it will take some time before the model uh, so it changes status to starting. But it will take some model before the model is running. So wait till the model status changes changes to running, and if for instance programmatically you want to check the status of the model, actually there's an API where you can get get project version or something like that, and with that you can get to know the status of the model, whether it's still in starting state or it has changed to the running state. Now my model is running. Now I can test my images uh, on this. So for to do so, I'm creating another code over here, you can see. Uh, and in this case, um, I'm saying that I want to um, uh, call the Boto Recognition API again. And this is my model ARN, same thing. But in this case, I change my method called detect custom labels. Uh, and then second parameter is I give the image which I want to use for detecting the labels on. So say I'm saying that in my Dojo test images, there's a test one dot JPEG file. Why don't you tell me what label this image has? Oh, uh, and in other words, I want to see whether it's a cat or a dog or none. And when I run that, I simply get a response back uh, and I simply go to the custom labels and I want to print the name of the label and confidence of the 
confidence of the model about that this is the label. So when you run this code again, actually I get a response back saying that, hey, you know what, the image you provided, test1.jpg, actually is a cat with 99.99% of confidence. So this is pretty high confidence, by the way, right? And true so, because if I go and open this uh, test1.jpg, it is really a cat, there are two cats there, in fact, not one cat. Okay, uh, so uh, let's test another one. So we used this test with test4.jpg, and in this game, I got a response that this is a dog with 100% confidence. So my model is literally uh, giving me results based on my images that whether it's a cat or a dog. Again, I just supplied you four images to do your testing, but you can bring your own cat and dog picture and try to test here to see whether model can give accurate prediction about these images and or not. And once you have done the testing, you don't want to pay for running the model, so you simply call this API to stop the model. And to do so, uh, again, you call, uh, you create recognition client, and you call this metal call stop project version. And when you do that, actually, your project will be, your, your model will be stopped. And when model stop, you don't pay for model uses anymore. So that's where the workshop ended where you created a custom model to be able to recognize if a certain picture is a picture of a cat or a picture of a dog, okay? And again, in this case, we kept it pretty simple. We had just a picture of a cat or dog, but you can have a mix of picture of cat and dog. In that case, you might want to use boundary box to separate your cats and dog picture on the, uh, on the uh, and then you can actually, yeah, you can make it even more mature models. So it's up to you, but I, I wanted to give you some ideas that how easy it is to use your custom images and create custom labels to create a custom model. And I leave it to you to experiment. Now, next step is to simply go and clean up the resources so that you don't incur any cost post this exercise. And that was all for this workshop, guys. Uh, if you like this workshop, please click on the like button and please subscribe to my channel. Um, there are many other workshops and exercises like, like this on our website, aws-dozo.com. Uh, please yeah, visit our website, look into these workshops and exercises, implement scenario like I just talked about, and learn about AWS services. If you have any feedback or comment or suggestion or request for a new content, feel free to reach out to through the YouTube comments either. Or you can also come to a website, click on this contact us button, and you can provide us feedback there. So that was all for today, guys. Uh, I promise to come back again uh, in a few days time with some new exciting videos and exercise. Meanwhile, uh, enjoy your day, stay safe, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.